This is TEDx from Pomari, and I think this is the first time you are presenting in front of thousands of people. Are you sure you can do this? I don't know, I'm nervous, but I think I can do it. But then, uh, I'm not a speaker, I'm not a poet, I'm not a spoken word artist, I'm just an ambitious person trying to impart what I got from my family. Okay. I believe you'll be surprised of this title, Orphanhood, a new definition of strength and gift. We all know that parents are our first teachers. I lost my dad 16 years ago, and I lost my mom 10 years ago. At that time, I thought that's the end of my life. That's the end of my career. As I said, I'm a very ambitious person. I want to learn a lot of things. So my dad, then before my mom passed away, he just told me, Muhammad, you have to do extraordinary activities, extraordinary projects for you to be a very strong person. I said, all right. After his death, I thought of quitting school, to be honest with you, but then Thanks to my uncle who took care of me, and at the same time, uh, I was opportune to get a scholarship at Nigerian Tulip International College, Yobe, from JS2 up to SS3. So I had a lot of challenges one way or the other, but then my uncle and my teachers at that very school, they now said, look, uh, challenges is a way to build someone into something you never think of becoming. And that's what I take, actually. So uh, I'm here to share my life story with you. I'm not a motivational speaker, as I said. But I believe my story is a new definition of strength and also a gift to those of you sitting here that lost their parents, that lost their parents as a result of this insurgency, just know that you are a blessing and at the same time you are also a gift to the community. Because once you are a human being, you don't only belong to yourself, you belong to your family, your community. Thank you very much. Uh, from the slide, you can see a lot of damages by the Boko Haram insurgency. Right from the schools, they destroy schools, mocks, market. They left our mothers without husband, our brothers without dad and family. And even the police, police station, they were destroyed. The mocks were destroyed. The churches were destroyed. So now you'll be thinking, what is the name of Boko Haram? So you'll be thinking they destroy schools, churches, mosques, and other government property. Who are those people? So we have three diseases of the world entirely, which is illiteracy, poverty, and disunity. These are the problems. The in all the world are suffering from these diseases. And if you can relate it to the Boko Harams, it's the same thing. They are illiterate, right? They don't have job. I don't know. They don't know the real definition of humanity. We believe that from the Quran and from the Bible, we all know our genesis is from a single man and woman. That means you are my family. She's my family. The people outside the country, they are also my family. So why will I come and kill my brother? While the Quran said that we are family. And at the same time, even the Bible said that. So now you'll be thinking, what is the problem of those people? And that's why the entire world are suffering from all these things. They are killing people there. They are killing 
destructing people everywhere. And then somebody asked me, what about other countries? A very developed countries, they are fighting. I think they are very educated. In terms of poverty, they don't have problem, but they are fighting. Why? Because they don't have the quality education. And the solution to that is education is our hope. So my topic now, education is the key solution to fight against three diseases of the world. But what kind of education? It has to be a modern education and the uh, Islamic education, Christian education, any other religion education. I believe you've never seen a bird that fly with one wing. It's never possible. So if you have a Western education and you don't have the religious education, you are just like this bird with one wing and you cannot go anywhere. The same thing if you have a well Islamic knowledge without Western knowledge, you will be one of those Boko Harams, kidnappers, and other people like that. So how can we solve this problem? OK, these are some of the Almajris, the Boko Harams. So now I ask myself, Muhammad, you went to school, right? Yeah, OK. And you lost your dad and your mom. But at least you have this zeal that, yes, you want to impart something to the community. If not because of school, I will end up maybe at one of the al or maybe the kidnappers, or maybe the Boko Haram to be killing other people. But Alhamdulillah, I went to school, and I can say I went to one of the best schools under your state government scholarship. You may be thinking, Nigerian Tulip International College is a very expensive school. But then, what I learned from them is something that changed my life into where I am right now. Because I remember when I was in SS1, we had a competition to decorate our classes. So one of our teacher, he now thought of, OK, let's write peace, tolerance, love. Peace, tolerance, love. So these are the key solutions in order to solve all kinds of problems. Because once you're educated, you've already solved the problem of illiteracy. And then if you're educated, like many of you here, I believe you are working in one way or the other, doing business. Alhamdulillah, you solve the problem of poverty. And I know if you have a qualitative qualitative knowledge qualitative knowledge you know that yes from the genesis we are all equal and all what you are going to do you are going to try your best and see you impact the little you have to the community and at the same time to teach the younger ones that are coming the next generation because one day we'll all pass away so if you now leave it to yourself you will die so the idea is now dead. But then when you teach others the basic principle of life, which is that love, which is that peace, which is that tolerance, tolerating each other, I believe all the problems will be solved. So education now, mind you, qualitative education. Because somebody asked me, you said education. I said yes. What about the developed countries? I said, of course, they are educated, but then they, uh, they don't have a quality education. Because if you have a quality education, you are not going to fight with any other person. You believe that everybody is your brother. So you may be thinking other countries are fighting. They lack education, quality education. So now we are all from your state. I want to give this assignment to each and every one of us here that qualitative education is the solution. So how can we start solving all these problems? Once you believe with this qualitative education, go back to your various houses, go back to your various families, teach them 
Okay, look, you know, this is the basic principle of life. Love, peace, tolerance. Please, don't kill your brother. Please, accept this as your brother. Accept that as your sister. I believe this would be the only solution to solve all the destruction, all the suffering. All of my brothers, I mean, my, I, my parents passed away not because of the insurgency, but then those of our brothers that lost their parents because of the insurgency will now have that confidence that, yes, they are not to go back maybe to army and fight for the insurgency, but then they should go back to their houses, teach the younger ones, teach the younger generation that this is the purpose of this life. Once you started teaching them this, I believe the international problem, the national problem, we will start solving it right away from our own state and will be the solution. Your best state will be the solution to solve all these three diseases of the entire world. And I believe one day other countries will come down to your best state, will come down to our state and now take this ideology, take it to their country and then the world will be in peace. So now, this idea of education, qualitative education that will bring beneficial knowledge, I have explained the idea. So now, what passion do we have to take this idea into the next level? That's the question mark. You have to have passion for this, that I'm from Yobe State, we suffered from insurgency, destructions for like 10 years. So now, what is the solution? We are not financially strong to think that, okay, we are going to give this scholarship, give that, give that. But then, we are all educated. So how can we solve this? Let's go back to our community and also give them with passion. Remember, with passion. Not because of, okay, I just have to do it. No. Do it with passion. And then, the journey is the most important aspect. We suffered for 10 years, and if you believe that in just five years, you are going to solve all the problems, no, it's not possible. Change is a process. And that's why when you were given birth, you started working gradually, gradually, up to the level that no one is holding your hands, and you start working like that. So that's why the journey is very, is very, I mean, challenging. You encounter a lot of problems. People will be believing. What are your ideas? Maybe you have hidden agenda. But then that hidden agenda is the qualitative education that you teach them the purpose of our life and the importance of living one another in harmony. And that's the only way we will have these problems that we face in our state. So now, what will be our reward? Our reward is after you passed away, People will now come to the stage and said, oh, there is so-so-so person, this is what he told me, and then I'm now putting it into practice, and I'm happy, and that's why I'm proudly telling you this. I started learning all these things from my late parents. They are not here to see me. But then, alhamdulillah, I'm a proud son of the late family of Muhammad Muhammad <laughs> Okay, from the picture, you can see this is my late dad and my mom, and this is my uncle. And then, now, one uh, important message I want to pass to you is this. One day you'll be an uncle to a lot of people that passed away, I mean their parents passed away. Please, take them with cares. Take them as if they are your children, because one day they will be the one to benefit from you. This is my uncle. During the program we uh, organized for Near Foundation, he came all the way from Kano. And then he saw the program, he was like, Muhammad, the sky is your limit. I mean, the sky is your starting point. So that's why one day, if your relatives passed away and they brought a child or a daughter, please take them with care. Finally, I want to give this message. Aspire to inspire before you expire. Because we are alive, so let's aspire to be ambitious, to inspire something beneficial to our community. Because if we die, 
that good work will be the one to continue to help us in our life. And then finally, to the organizers of this program, to be honest with you, this is just the starting point of solving the problems of that insurgency in our country. Because now, I, as, as I can see, those people that are coming to Yobe at first, just get ready that they will be the starting point of all sorts of such kind of programs in order to bring back better, bring back better to all the destruction we made. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much.